Now, ladies and gentlemen, I told you earlier I had a <clears throat> great interview, which you probably will see on Channel 3. Uh, this lady kind of grew up with the big bands. She was not discovered during the big bands. She had many things she'll talk about. But she made her big, her big uh, mark with the big bands. She's done four command performances at the White House. Ronald Reagan, president, gave her the Courage Award, 1988. Please welcome, please welcome Miss Connie Haynes. You're going to hear just about the greatest music ever written. <laughs> and I'm so grateful to tell you that for my entire lifetime, I've been the one to sing it. I see you there on this your special day. I came here to sing for you, and I love it so much. Boys, let's take it away. throw it. with the Tommy Dorsey Band, and you know it featured the gentleman sitting right here in the sax section, Mr. Don Lotus. Right here, Don, stand up. <laughs> on that record, and also Buddy Rich on drums. But tonight we are featuring Jerry White, fantastic. And where do you hear the rest of the boys play? A one, two, three, four. Yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you so very much. Well, you know, I started my career in the big man era. And you know, we had each band feature boy girl singers. And with Benny, we had, of course, Peggy Lee. And then we had Harry James and Helen Forrest and Dick Haynes, right? And help me out a bit. Glenn Miller, we had, uh, we had uh, Ray Eberly, Marion Hutton and the Modern Airs, you know, are so great. Still going strong today, Paula Kelly Jr. And then they had Jimmy Dorsey Band. Who was with Jimmy? It was Bob Eberly and Helen O'Connell, my wonderful friend. <laughs> Yeah, and then Tommy Dorsey had Frank Sinatra and me. <laughs> so I thought you'd like to hear some of those hit records that I did with the Dorsey band right here and the duets that I did with Mr. Frank Sinatra. Okay? A one, two, three, four. <laughs> So you get at that one. <laughs> now this next one featured that wonderful Mr. Bunny Berry get on trumpet. As my very first record with a band was this. You see I know. join Frank Sinatra and me as we all recorded this one together. And let's take a boat to Bermuda. And let's take a plane to St. Paul. And let's take a kayak to Quincy and not back. And let's get away from it all. Let's take a trip for trail. Dorsey decided that he wanted to have original songs written for us, so he hired famous songwriters, famous today, but they weren't then. Bobby Troop, you know, Route 66, and, and then, of course, that wonderful Tom Adair and Matt Dennis, and, and they write, wrote songs like Everything Happens to Me, and Violets for Your Furs, Little Man with a Candy Cigar, and for me, remember Don? They wrote... <laughs> They wrote this song for me to record the day we opened that great New York Paramount Theater. When lovers make no rendezvous, to stroll along Fifth Avenue. This familiar world is the room.
then, you know, we had a wild piano man in the band, and he doesn't live too far from here, Santa Barbara, and he still has his little swinging jazz group. I'm talking about that Joey Bushkin. Joey Bushkin is just as wild today as he ever was. And so he said, all these guys writing songs, I can write a song. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so he decided he was going to write this one. He said it not only featured the Pied Pipers and Joe Stafford singing with them and Frank Sinatra and me, but he wanted to feature all these fabulous musicians just like I got right here behind me tonight. And it because he featured Don Lotus in on tenor sax and Johnny Mintz on clarinet, right? And Ziggy Elman and Jimmy Blake, <laughs> you know, on trumpet. And of course, on drums, we did have that, Mr. Buddy Rich. And this was a song that featured the entire ensemble. I'm not the guy who cared about love. I'm not the guy who cared about fortune and such. Mm, never cared much, but whoa, whoa, look at me now. But whoa, 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 look at me now. And you know, in the midst of all this swinging, wonderful, happy music, there were tears. Yes, lots of tears have filled my eyes. When my heart Thank <laughs> you. 
wonderful. Well, after singing all those recordings, I think I'd better tell you I'm not Connie Haynes. <laughs> My name is Yvonne Marie Antoinette Jamais. <laughs> Would you like me to say that one more time? <laughs> My real name is Yvonne Marie Antoinette Jamais. Didn't know I was a French girl, did you? <laughs> Born in Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> Somehow the two don't go together. They say I even have a southern accent when I speak French. <laughs> well, it is so happened that I started singing approximately five years old and all my life throughout the country. And, and I said, we went from Savannah, Georgia, to Jacksonville, Florida, to Miami. And would you believe I was a champion Charleston dancer at the age of five of the whole state of Florida. <laughs> Guess who I lost to? Ginger Rogers. <laughs> True story. People think I'm kidding. So, of course, they discovered her as she was the national champion, and, and they teamed her up with Fred Astaire, and the, you know the rest of the story. So, of course, I had to grow up a little bit. And so, uh, while I was singing, though, uh, and I'm 16 at the time in Miami uh, at a little supper club on the beach, um, band leader said to my mother, you know, you've got to take Yvonne to New York City. We have to get her an audition with William Morris or MCA agency. So mother took him at his word and they put us up in their home and back we went to New York on a Greyhound bus. <laughs> and while I was behind closed doors rehearsing with the piano player from the band in a music publishing office on, it was the Brill Building on Broadway and you know that old building is still there. Well. A knock came on the door, and they said, there's a famous band leader in here that has been listening to you. He wants you to audition right now. I did. He accepted me, and I joined the band on a one night or that night. Who can tell me the first band I sang with? Yeah, you know. Say it louder. Harry James. <laughs> so many people aren't aware that Harry discovered me and he discovered Frank Sinatra. And you know, I think he discovered Dick Haynes even later than that. But it so happened that night in the cab on the way the one nighter, he turned to me and he says, Yvonne, what are we going to do with that name of yours on a marquee? <laughs> there sure be no room for me. And with that, he, he said, You look like a Connie. Connie. Haynes, that blends with James. <laughs> True story is how I got my name. <laughs> and you know, I didn't know how to spell it until I saw it up in lights the next day, Atlantic City, Steel Pier. They used to have a horse that dove, dove off at the end, remember? <laughs> I just played there last summer and uh, the horse is back. <laughs> Well, you know, I left the bands, both of those wonderful bands, and went on to be with Abbott and Costello on radio for four years and Universal Pictures with the boys and traveling personal appearance all over the country. And this was my hit record at the time. And you know, it's still my favorite song to sing. Three, four.
love that song. <laughs> well, it's such fun reminiscing and doing all the great music. But I want you to know, I'm current, girls. <laughs> I went to New York City about five years ago now and did my last album. <laughs> and it was like 75 track board. And you know what that means? 75 microphones. <laughs> And in those days with the Big Band era and the modern ears and the Pied Pipers, Sinatra and me, we all recorded on one. And it still sounds pretty good today. But it's great, the feats, the engineering feat that they've done. And in the sound stereo, it's just phenomenal. And well, I thought right here you might like a preview of, of my recent album. Would you like that? And I brought a few with me too. I had a chance to do some ballads and something old, something new, and something blue. <laughs> I think I better go for my stool though. I like being closer to you this way. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> but I gotta go back with the piano and Dick Parrott on piano and his wonderful band. In fact, why don't we stop right here and make these boys stand up. I couldn't sing like this without them. On your feet. <laughs> Why don't I sort of sit here by you? And you can give me some mood lighting. <laughs> you can hold hands while I do some of these. <laughs> That's it. I've flown around the world in a plane. I've settled revolutions in Spain. The North Pole I have charted, but I can't get started with you. Baby can't get no place with you. You're so supreme. Lyrics I write of you scheme just for the sight of you.
nation Jealousy and hate Same old story. Fight for love and glory. A case of do or die. The world will always welcome lovers. happy to say that that uh, when you buy my tapes cassette tapes and and my life story I brought with me too that it uh, goes all the songs you hear been hearing is it on the the tape of the album and it goes into the Connie Haynes Cancer Foundation well <laughs> thank you there's a story there's a story behind it as Fred mentioned that uh, President Ronald Reagan honored me with the Courage Award. Well, you see, it so happens that I, too, had that cancer challenge. And I had to have three cancer surgeries in three weeks to save my life. Then they put me on three years of chemotherapy. <laughs> Hooked up, you know, intravenously, weekly. Well, I was determined I was going to make it with my own faith in God and the positive power of the mind. And, well, all during that three-year period, I can honestly tell you, I never once lost a strand of hair, I never got sick, and I never missed a show on the road. <laughs> I say I signed my way back to health. I had to make the show to be here to sing for you, and that's all that was on my mind. And you know, I thought, I don't have a monopoly on this uh, attitude, health connection, and the power of the mind to heal the body. And thank goodness medical science has even proven it works today. And so I founded right then uh, the Connie Haynes Cancer Foundation. And it's, of course, federal tax exempt. And I, I thought, I want to start my workshops and support groups and lecture. And, and I was on stage just doing what I'm doing right now, telling my story. And someone from the American Cancer Society was in the audience. And they approached me. They asked me to be their national spokesperson. And then Prince, yes. And I am to this day. <laughs> still travel around singing and speaking for them. And then they brought my story in front of our president at that time, who was President Ronald Reagan. And so he, along with Nancy, had me come to the White House and in the Rose Garden, he honored me 
with the Courage Award of 1988. It's such a thrill. Right this minute when I think about it, and I want to tell you something else. It's been 11 years now, and I never felt better in my life. <laughs> it can happen to you. <laughs> All of you. <laughs> yes, because I know so many have had this cancer challenge, and, and just keep on keeping on and hanging in there with your faith in God. With the title song of my album now, was chosen in 88 for the American Cancer Society, big 75th anniversary, and we're... President Ronald Reagan then honored me, and, and this was the song they chose to be their theme song, and it is the title of my album. Can you hear me back? Okay. I am what I am. What I am is my own creation. So much well I'll come out afterwards over there where we have the tapes of my life story the book about the big band era an autograph for you all all right well remember when I sang with three of my best friends and one of the ladies was here just a couple of weeks ago Beryl Davis right isn't she fabulous <laughs> well I saw Beryl last evening and Beryl and I and Jane Russell and Rhonda Fleming teamed up many years ago I can't even count them, <laughs> but it was before we got married and we gave wedding showers, baby showers, <laughs> divorce showers, <laughs> did happen, <laughs> but wow, did we have the kids, we had eight amongst us, I had two, <laughs> and you know, I'm telling you, when I started out singing as a teenager at 16, I sure never thought I'd still be doing it as a grandma, <laughs> I love it better than ever, thank you. Would you believe I got a 21-year-old granddaughter? <laughs> but my daughter's only 36. <laughs> she really is only 39. She just had her birthday. And then I have a son, 38. Well, these songs were gospel songs that the girls did with me. And we're like sisters to this day. And a couple of weeks ago, I happened to perform over in the San Fernando Valley at the Moonlight Tango. And it was an 18-piece band like these fabulous boys. And, and the girls came, I got them up, and they sang this medley with me. And I'd like to share it with you tonight. 
You ready to romp, boys? <laughs> I gotta come back here and romp with you. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, four. Wanna clap? control I have over these men. <laughs> Would you believe only on stage? <laughs> well, you've been such a warm and beautiful audience. The nicest way now that I know to say thank you and good evening is to leave you with this lovely thought. May the good Lord bless and keep you whether near or far away, may you find that long-awaited golden day today. May your troubles all be small ones, and your fortunes ten times ten. May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again. God bless you all. <laughs> Miss Heidi Haynes, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you 